Hey there, welcome to Cord Cutters. My name is Janko Redgers. And I'm Ryan Lawler, and Cord Cutters is all about helping you save lots of money by canceling your cable subscription. In this week's episode of Cord Cutters, I'm going to show you how to connect your computer straight to the TV. And finally, like every week, a web series review from Liz Shen Miller, Inverted World. I think it's about the moon falling onto the earth. <laughs> <laughs> And one of our favorite parts of the show is hearing from our viewers. People have been sending in pictures and videos of their cord cutting setups at home. We'd love to get more. So please send them along to cordcutters at gigom.com. Or you can follow us on Twitter, at cordcutters, where you can ask us questions and see what we're up to. And one of the things we're doing on Twitter is we're collecting New Year's resolutions, because we think 2011 is the year that you should resolve to cut the cord. So keep watching the show, and we're going to show you how to do it. Here on Cord Cutters, we tend to talk a lot about boxes, the Apple TV, the Boxy Box, the Roku Box, all these new devices to get internet videos straight to your television. But you know, all of you already own a box that's good enough for it. It's your plain old computer. It can be your notebook or your Mac Mini. All of those can be connected to the television. Well, first of all, it's cheaper to do this. You don't have to buy an extra device. And then you also get a lot of additional extra programming. Basically anything you can think of and anything you can watch on your computer, you can watch on your television this way. So let's take a look at it and see how it's done. So the first thing that you have to think about when you want to connect your computer to your television is, well, what kind of adapters do you need? What kind of plugs do you have? And how do you actually do this physically? So uh, a lot of the computers traditionally have an RGB output. This is this connector here. You plug it straight into your television and then uh, you get the video to your TV, but it doesn't actually deliver the sound. For this, you also need to connect the sound somehow either straight to your television through uh, the audio out. Usually there's a headphone on it, a headphone symbol, or you can connect it straight to your home entertainment system or maybe you have some extra speakers lying around. Those work as well. Um, new, new computers, this one is a Toshiba fairly recent notebook have an additional feature. This one has an HDMI output. This is kind of preferable if you have something like this, you just connect it like any um, Blu-ray player or something to your TV through HDMI. And the added bonus of it is not only is it a backdrop picture quality, but you also get your audio straight to your TV so you don't have to worry about any additional cables. For Mac users, it's actually ironically a little more complicated because they have these specialized adapters on Macs that you have to buy. And if you go out and buy one at the Mac store, do yourself a favor, bring your MacBook. There's different models and different years and it's easy to buy the wrong one. Let's just say it like that. It should look like this on one side and then on the other side, the RGB cable coming from your TV looks kind of like this one. And you take them and you kind of shove them together and that's it, how you connect it. And then this end goes straight into your display adapter port on your MacBook or MacBook Pro. And like on any good cooking show, I have mine prepared right here. Um, plugged into my MacBook Pro and I also plugged a little audio cable in here to get the sound straight to the TV. And then basically you have your computer connected to your TV. You can, the easiest way of course is go to your computer, open your browser and then for example go to Netflix and just start streaming a movie. And then it's going to show up on your TV as well. Another piece of the puzzle is uh, having a media center software actually installed on your computer. One of the most popular ones is Boxy for Apple. Um, and then you can just use your remote control to navigate through Boxy. I'm going to do this here. You can see how I can access with the remote control TV show library and then I can go to a TV show like The Office and just with three or four clicks I can uh, really easy start streaming content and I don't even have to leave the couch for it. So as a conclusion, this is a good way to get internet video onto the television, especially for people who want to save a buck and not buy an extra device to try out all these services. At the same time, it can be a little tricky. You have to kind of find out which adapters you need and how they all fit together. And you also sometimes have to tinker a little bit with the screen resolutions and all these things. And finally, you know, computers crash and now they're going to crash with your TV. All of this stuff, all the fun stuff is going to now come to your television. But, you know, it's worth trying it out. Just give it a try. If you have an extra computer lying around, uh, if maybe if you want to take a break from the computer, just connect it to your TV and watch some good video. Hi, this is Liz Shannon Miller, and this week's Cord Cutters pick is a little unconventional. See, you get a lot of stuff when watching web content that you could imagine seeing on TV. But every once in a while, a unique voice just kind of pops up and launches a completely original take on a concept. And that's kind of what we got here today with the show O oh Inverted World. O oh Inverted World is an independent web series currently running on Vimeo. Ostensibly, it's about 420-somethings who return to their small town after college. 
ostensibly that's what the show's about, but there's some strange stuff going on in this small town, including teleporting femme fatales and rumors that the moon might be about to fall into the earth. The show's shot in black and white, with the occasional burst of color, and while it's a little muddled in look, you wouldn't necessarily feel the need to blow it up to the big screen, it is a really nice uh, way of capturing this quirky, independent film sort of feel. If I was a lame Hollywood studio person, I'd tell you the show is Kevin Smith's Clerks combined with Donnie Darko. I'm not a lame Hollywood studio person, though. I'm just someone telling you that the show is fun, it's got a lot of hidden surprises, a lot of clever twists, and you should check it out.